What time is it, Wayne? We got 6.22. It's 6.22, so that means I have to be at the finish line at 5.18. Yep. That's 10 hours and 56 minutes. 5.18 p.m. In time for dinner. I like it. Pizza. Pizza and beers. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. Thank you. Oh, man. So, well, first of all, Brad, like, where, where are you? Uh, in Colorado, right? Yep, in Colorado. I live in Carbondale. Okay. Um, not too nope. far from Aspen here. So I'm going to go for the Coca Pelle record tomorrow or Friday. And, um, you know, I've kind of been watching like a hawk to see that the trail was clear and there were some unknown parts. And then Blink, I saw it pop up on, on the Strava. That I think you are the first person to do the Coca Pelle in 2021 let alone in one day so congrats you know you you pioneered it for <laughs> exiting the pandemic hopefully <laughs> yeah unless somebody did it without strava you never know right but yeah i appreciate that 16 hours right like that's that is insane to me i mean that's why do you want to ride your bike that long like what what is what's the objective for you to do this i, I don't know that i have a particularly great answer for why right like i just but yeah there's something really special about being out in a place like that where it's just you and your bike and you know you see how far it is especially on the coke Pelly because you're looking at the los Alls the whole time so like you see where you started i'm guessing you brought lights with you or was it the moon was good or definitely no moon when i started a little bit of moon when i finished because <laughs> i finished in the dark as well <gasps> oh my gosh um yeah so it looks like i was looking at your strava this morning it looks like you rode like pretty much the whole route huh yeah, except for the first climb. I mean, I've never done it. And to try to make a, an attempt on it, like, I think just knowing it helps a lot. Um, yeah. This is my crow's skull. I rub it. it. Helps me fly up the mountain. Stay light as a feather. Beautiful day now. We are gonna ride the second half of the Cocopelli Trail. I think it's helpful to know the trail because on something that's as long as 10 or 11 hours that you're gonna save 20 30 minutes just knowing what's coming and how to dose the effort uh, instead of just uh, sending a sight unseen i'm spending two days reconning catch my breath in moab and then we're gonna go full stick so and mine's over there all happy. I'm planning on being out for five hours. So basically I got hour one, hour two, hour three, get me through hour four you kind of with the blocks you can kind of uh nurse them you can grab two or three at a time and then just in case in the end ha -ha! this is my favorite the kitty bars it's like this is a real cookie actually and these are real easy to get down so if you just need like a shove it all in your mouth at once amazing energy never struggling with the flavor i race these are a, a very important part of my, my program. If you're a kid at heart, you can eat a kid's bar, right? All right, you're at, I'm gonna call it 60. For the effort, I wanna basically run 17, 19. Yeah. It's literally like half. <laughs> what I, 
All right, man. Okay. Time to go biking. All right. What is the draw of FKT? And I'm talking, you know, for some people, the funnest known time. Like I just actually talked to a guy who did the first Coca Pelli of this year, last week. He did it all in one day in 16 hours. Nice. But, um, you know, in terms of, you know, you guys being the record holders, um, what's the draw of going the fastest? Like why turn yourself inside out for 11 and 13 hours respectively? For me, it's interesting and it really, at first it doesn't make sense, but if you think about it, I think it does. <laughs> and that when I'm trying to get somewhere as fast as I can, I have to be so focused that I actually ride the most present of any other ride. Cause you can't think about like where you started or where you're going. At least I can't like in ultras, I have to focus on just really small chunks at a time. And that just makes me be so tuned into my body and the landscape and my bike. And, and so that heightened awareness of the present is ultimately the thing that I find so captivating about it. Like a 10 hour flow state. Meditation. I'm gonna try it tomorrow. Where did you guys filter? Did you try to find like the streams higher up and like filter early? Or are you just dealing with that Colorado river in the second half? Hey, hey. I got water at Fisher Creek and at McGraw in the Colorado river. Yeah, and I've usually done the same thing when I've ridden it. Spell. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Homie is fast, man. <laughs> Good battle. All my time on the climb, and it's literally been the same time for the last 30 minutes. Or, sorry, two and a half hours. <laughs> but I've stopped. This is my second water stop. Hopefully he has to stop at some point. A lot of razors out there. So dusty out there.
I noticed just doing a little bit of pre-writing that it's like, it almost like rolls out in chapters, right? Like you have like the La Salles and the mountains and then like the really chunky, like, I had no idea. Like there's like 10 minute hike -a bikes in this thing, man. Like, yeah, it's a legit mountain bike route, even though there are some long sections of gravel in places like kind of rough gravel. Um, the, the Jeep roads, like in that area you're talking about, those are really legitimately challenging both up and down. Lachlan flatted out in that and cracked his rim on that when he rode it. And uh, I know quite a few people that have crashed hard on those sections. And then the end of it has this really challenging single track too, that, you know, it's not that hard in and of itself, but when you hit it after 130 miles and you've got like 10 miles of kind of ledgy, rocky stuff to navigate, like your legs are barely holding it together and your focus is barely holding it together. And that becomes like really a legitimate challenge there to keep, whether it's to just not crash or to keep your legs from cramping or whatever it might be. Looks like we're at about 205 kilometers. That means he's got roughly 20 to go. And so far he's at nine hours and 12, 13 minutes. So we're cautiously optimistic, but uh, this section of trail he's got coming in here is filled with shelves and drops and kind of everything not to mention it's a spectacular place to ride so there's tons of people so uh finishing stretch but it's not an easy one so gotta... are you filming that guy? are you filming that guy who was yeah having... yeah we are because <laughs> he passed us like we were standing still well then how'd you guys get here first we took a different way. No, we passed him. He... Yeah, there you go. We passed him. <laughs> passed him he, back. he had a hard time riding down into salt water. <laughs> and we and just flew. so we just we just went right by him. Yeah. yeah. How did our man look when he saw him? He was fast. Nice. Was I was he... gonna ask him what he was up to, but then I didn't want to slow him down. He might have been in the stage where it was just silence at that point. He, uh... <laughs> no, he gave us a, he recognized us. No, he us. said hey. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's a nice guy. We're, we're going to give him that. Who had it? Um, somebody just... Kurt? Kurt, Kurt Resnider did it, right? Like, was it nine hours or something? Uh, 10.46 46. is... No, sorry. 10.56 is the time he's trying to beat right now. Okay. So how is he doing? He is... I haven't been watching my phone. Like and didn't you look at him? He was going really fast. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, you know, um, this section is so slow and chunky. Um, and it's steep pitches up and steep pitches down and rocks that want to slice your tire. And, you know, and part of me knows I'm pretty far up at this moment. Like, don't flat your tire, don't break something, don't break yourself, don't take a chance. <laughs> And anyone who's watching this is gonna be like, this guy's a pro bike rider? Like, what the hell? You're kind of seeing stars at this point. You know, you're, you're rationing your water. You're rationing what sugar you have left. I just didn't really trust myself that much at that point. Oh, there's that blue jacket. I passed these two bike packers and I had to wait for them on this gnarly hike-a-bike section and you see me look back at the blue jacket and I'm kind of like, uh, like it's Mother Earth Day and karma, like should I try to yell at them? But, and I think they were bike packing, but then I was like, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> so another dismount. Yeah, I look really bad. It's just, again, you have to realize. <laughs> it's, 
This is after 10 hours, and this is the last 12 miles, and you've been going well over 12 miles an hour all day. You'd think it'd take an hour, and it takes like an hour 40. And I think I actually hemorrhaged like five minutes back to Kurt just in this last bit. And then you get across the river, and then you have this other crazy technical climb that's just 20% little run-ups. Run-ups? Yeah. I was running in my mind. That was as fast as I could go. And there's another dude who was just like, he must have seen what I was doing and I was going hard and he just waited on the side of the trail. <laughs> I was making ape sounds at the end. Um, and then later on the trail, there's this one ridge line again, like in, in the last five miles, and there's the Colorado River beneath you. And it looks so refreshing and nice. And it's just this gusty windswept and it's just pick yourself over a rock, over a rock, four miles an hour. And I just start yelling like, F you mother nature, you're like, I was just angry at everything. And then I hear all these voices and there's this whole group of rafters like 400 feet beneath me on this cliff and it just got really silent for a moment. And they're just, <laughs> uh, I felt so bad. And this is the final downhill and it's fun and chunky and actually Riding it the two days before, I pinch flatted these brand new prototype tires. The first time I'd flatted them since, you know, I used them for the white rim and all of that. So I was actually really trying to nurse the tires. Just, it made me nervous. You know, it's just so much sharp rock out there. It's a waiting game. What, why are we standing here? Why are we standing here? This is the finish for the Kilcapelli Trail. And it's a little bit, with these FKTs, it's a little bit, uh, ambiguous as to where the actual line is because it's all done digitally uh, with using GPS. So we think it's somewhere around that Cocapelli sign that's right there. But um, when he comes in, he'll actually sprint past it just to ensure that he's got the, uh, the finish line dialed. You know, there's a, there's a little bit of the FKT community that says, you know, if there's a film crew, that's external motivation. It's not just you and Mother Nature. And, and the film crew was actually really just a fly on the wall. But, I mean, Wayne doesn't care. He's just so stoked the whole time. He's just the biggest cheerleader. And you can't take that stoke away from anyone. <laughs> so I think he's actually more excited than I am. That was awesome.
that was that start was freezing and it snowed up there that's so when you started we're like we're going to that castle valley thing just in case like there's no sense in hypothermia or anything and uh it's yeah. all wet up there um i was furious when i hit the wet, wet tarmac mm. i can't imagine what you were feeling it was lucky that that stuff was so muddy like if i touched uh dirt it started to bog so i actually had to like ride on the the crown of the double track where there's like a snow tread. Oh dang. So I was riding on the snow. I was losing bike. time, but I kept the bike clean. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, man. Ah, okay. We're done. Good job, guys. Oh, good, good job, team. Yeah. Team FKT. What's the F stand for again? Fucked. So fucked. It's also nice, you know, on a, the little racer in me is like, you know, put your stamp on this course. I mean, I, the record's been, you know, it will be broken probably before this video airs, and which is fine, you know, it's, and that's not really my goal is to hold these things forever, but it's to, to highlight this trail and, and the community that's doing it. And, you know, hopefully, bring something to it um, and internally I like it you know I, I left it all out there and I, I find pleasure in that so um, there's got to be another cool trail to do that somewhere else where are we going next there we go you freak Privatized. Sure, move along, move along. Oh my god. I ate more on this ride than I ever have in an effort, so. and I needed every ounce of it. Did you finish all your food? I have one gel left, <laughs> and it was at the end, like I actually had two, and I got to like five miles to go. I was like, fuck, I'm gonna have to take this gel. Like, I just wanna get down there. Like, I don't want another sugar bomb, but yeah, um, I had to. <laughs> you call that the step now. I feel like you just ordered half of the board. Sorry, I'm all stoked. It's, uh, this is this is when I'm happiest. Is when the bike's all all set to go, ready to rip, double, triple, quadruple checked everything. It's all on him now. Who just texted? Mr. Kerr Ref Schneider. Um, Again, he's all behind this. He just wants to know how it went and, and all that, which is really cool. He's all for the the furtherment of this thing. So um, more of that's what, what's impressive is how from hour two and a half to five, we literally had the exact same time. Like after the big climbs, I had a, like a 11 minute lead, it said, on the segment and Uphill, I would gain a minute. Downhill, he would gain a minute. All the way until the halfway point. And I was just like, this, this guy is just mobbing. Putting this thing on until someone comes and takes it from me. Four Coca Pellies, one for every life I lost out there on the trail. <laughs>